Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to do two more problems that involve the properties of integers. So I didn't actually write the answer choices out because I don't think you're going to need them, but just know that there are answer choices, I just didn't write them. So the first question says the sum of the prime numbers greater than 60 but less than 70 is what? So the first thing you need to notice is that they did say greater than, they did not say greater than or equal to. So that is going to eliminate the number 60 itself, um, the same for 70. So first of all, the set of numbers we're dealing with is 61, 6, 6, oops, sorry, 62, 63, 65, 66, 67, 68, and 69. So now they further are narrowing down this set to the prime numbers. So if you remember what a prime number is, it's a number that has a factor of one and itself. So um, the first thing we can automatically do is eliminate the even numbers because the even numbers are going to have um, two as a factor. So let's go ahead and get rid of 62, 64, 66, 68. So the next easiest way I would say to do this is check for divisibility by three. So if you remember, um, a number is divisible by three when the sum of the digits is divisible by three. So for example, we can check 61, six plus one equals four, so it is not divisible by three. Um, 63, six plus three equals nine, so it is divisible by three. So let's go ahead and cross that off our list. Um, 65, the sum is 11, that's not divisible by three. 67, the sum is 13, that number is not divisible by 3. 69, the sum here is um, 15, and that is divisible by 3, so we can go ahead and cross that off. So now we're left with three remaining choices. We have 61, 65, and 67. Um, my mind automatically catches 65 because we know that's divisible by 5 because it ends in a 5 and a 0, so we're going to cross that off. So now we're left with these two options, 61 and 67. So just intuitively, my mind is going to tell me that these are in fact prime. Um, the safest way to do it is to go through the divisibility of all the numbers. So check out 4. Um, we know it's not 4 because it's not divisible by 2, but if you weren't sure about that, you would check the rest of the numbers. So I think we didn't check 4, 6, 7, um, eight or nine, but we can automatically eliminate the, eliminate the even numbers. So the only thing we might want to check for is divisibility by seven. So let's go ahead and do that. 61 divided by seven. Um, yeah, we already know that's, that's not going to go in there evenly. Um, same with 67. It doesn't go in there evenly. So these are our remaining two prime numbers. We have 61 and 67. Um, so now it says the sum of the prime numbers is what? So 61 plus 67 is going to equal 128. And that is going to be our answer. So um, just to recap, you this question was really, really focusing on prime numbers, divisibility rules, uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So I'll go ahead and write these off to the side. Just things to study if you weren't sure about this question. Prime numbers and divisibility rules, divisibility rules. So uh, let's see, number one and number two. Those are the main things I would say to study. Okay, going down to the second one. Okay, so if n is a prime number greater than three, what is the remainder when n squared is divided by 12? So we can make this problem more complicated and conceptual, or we could just plug in numbers. Normally I like to go on the conceptual route, but in this case I am actually just going to plug in values because I think it's going to save you time and that's going to be the most important thing. So if n is a prime number greater than 3, so let's just go with the next prime number greater than 3, which is 5. So when n squared, so we're going to let n equals 5, when that's squared, that equals 25. And so now it wants to know what the remainder is when it's divided by 12. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, 12 goes into 25 two times. 24 subtract 2, we get 1. So the remainder is 1. 
So that's most likely going to be our answer, but let's go ahead and check the next greatest prime number. So we'll label this as n sub 1. So our second number we're going to choose, n sub 2 is equal to 7. So n sub 2 squared is equal to 49. And let's go ahead and divide that. 12 goes into 49 four times. 12 times 4 is 48. Subtract, we get a remainder of 1. So um, I think that that is enough to confidently say that the correct answer is 1. There we go. And I probably would have had time for a third question, but I wasn't sure. So I will be continuing on in um, future videos. I am a math tutor and my email is in the description if you are interested. Thanks for watching.